Don. But I don't want no tea. It gives me a headache. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, what shall we have then? Coffee. Well, hello, everybody. I decided I would show you all how I primer my tank or parts of it. So here we go. I want to take you in here. I want to show you what I've set up here in my backyard. Here's my backyard. Lovely green trees and everything. I put a couple saw horses out here off of my back of my garage. And I have, as you can see, my hose right there running up to my regulator. Let's see if I can get in there. This comes from my, my main uh, um, air compressor in the garage. So I've got it right now. It says about uh, a little more than 20 PSI, but when you press the thing, it goes down to 20, which is about what I want, a little less than 20. I've got that run over to my hose for my um, Infinity Airbrush. Got everything ready there. Uh, my stand right there for that. You know, the box. I've got, if you want to, uh, get these little tea cup things to strain paint with. If you think it's got old paint and you got chunks in there, you can strain it through here when you go to mix it. I got my little pipettes here. My main, uh, where I put my main uh, thinner, paint thinner from Walmart. Uh, I got my paint, my primer, I mean. Cap, cleaning brushes, cleaning tip for my airbrush, some extra wooden sticks to stir with, some of the parts, some Walmart thinner paper towels, and blue tape. So I'm all ready, it's a nice day out. A uh, little windy, not bad, but uh, we'll give it a try. So let me get set up and on a tripod, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get set up, put some paint thinner in here. I don't container, you can do whatever you want, I just use a glass container. Uh, I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do, since I'm using paint there, so I'm using enamel, I'm gonna put, take some, one of my pipettes, put a few drops of uh, thinner in here. I'm gonna lubricate this thing. And what I'm doing is I'm just lubricating the O-rings, getting everything ready to put the paint in. Just run it out. There we go. Then, take the paint. Mix it up, get a stick. I want to put it in here. I mix it up a little bit. Make sure there's nothing in the bottom. Yep, nice and thin. I've already shaken this up before, so I kind of knew it was going to be that way. All right. So what I'll do, way to do it, is if you're going to put it in something, you don't want to drip it all over the place, put your stick up against it, pour it in there. All right, there we go. Wipe off the excess. There we go. Cap back on. And we're going to put a little paint thinner in here. Alright, so just a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. What you're going to try and do, there goes my compressor, sorry. What you're going to try and do is get this to the consistency of uh, milk or light milk. And I hope you can see it well enough. but. I want to put it up against the side here and watch it drip. Ah, it's still a little thick. I want to see it come down, but not too thick, you know? You don't want it to come down where it's so thick that it will clog your airbrush. This I put it on the side, watch it drip. Nah, a little better. Yeah, let me go a little bit more. Just a little bit at a time, a little paint thinner at a time. All right, that's better. Yes, that's coming down the side. I don't know if you can see it or not. But it's coming down the side rather easily now. It's not too thick. So we're gonna give that a try. Might a little bit more. To my AC unit and my compressor, it's gonna make noise here in there, so I'm real sorry. But anyway, let's try it again. Yeah, that's, that's thinner. If not, I can self-adjust it later on. Okay, so, first thing we're gonna do Pour it in here. All right, I don't need a whole lot to start off with. Now I wanna, what I should do is go like this. See that, ooh, yeah. Ooh, that's got good, good pressure right now. 
I think I'm going to adjust it in a little bit. I think I'm going to adjust my air pressure a little bit, as a matter of fact. Pull it out. Pull it out. There we go. That's good for primary. That's good. Let's get nothing and then just pull back just a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. Okay. So I've got that set. Let me put the cap on. I'll put a little bit more in there. Let me put the cap on so because I'm known for spilling stuff. <laughs> Getting all over my hands. Look, I already got it on my finger. Damn it. Alright. Good thing I have this stuff set up. Let me come up a little bit. And what I'm going to do, we're just going to start priming. I'm going to start with this little piece here. My, uh, I'm sure if you can see this. I know this background light is going to kill it. But All right, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and just come out real close and just gently hit it with the primer. There we go. Just lightly, just want a nice light coat, nothing special. We're just doing the primer. Gonna get it in around the edges. There we go, one nice thin coat on top of the searchlight. That's what you want, thin coats. Don't wanna sit there and do a bunch of fat, thick coats. You do that, you're gonna be hurting really bad. Hold on, I'm gonna get the turret. I'll be right back. All right, I had the turret sitting in the uh, sitting in the uh, a garage. Uh, let me let me see if I can raise this a little bit if it helps. Hold on. Let me see. All right, I'm trying to do this. And I know it's going to be dark. I hope it's not dark for you. Let me change some settings. Hold on. Uh -huh. Hold on. I'll be right back. All right. Let's try that. Um, I've got a... Uh, I lightened it up a little bit on the camera setting, so hopefully you can see. I know I'm in the shade out back because I can't do this in the sun, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Anyway, let me get this started here. Okay, here we go. Uh, I've got this just... I'm going to just press down on here. Get the air going, then pull it out to get the to get the uh, paint going. So basically, it's gonna hit with light coats. You can see it covering some stuff. I hope this is weird doing this. I've never done this for a video before, <laughs> but I'm just gonna do light coats. Be careful. You don't want too much. Try and get it in all the areas. Now, if it's a real tight area, you're gonna have to go back over. Or stuff like that. I hope I'm staying in frame for you. Hold on, let me turn something else off. There we go. I'm sorry if that got in your way. I don't know if there's a little thing on there or not. All right, so let me keep hitting this. I'll tell you what, let me hit the top of the hatch here, if you can see that. Just lightly. You don't need light, light coats. What I'm doing with this primer, really, basically, is just... Um, making all the different colors disappear because you got your photo etch colors which is a brass or copper color you've got your white pieces for the resin you've got uh, the, you know everything so what you're trying to do is you're putting everything into one color also you're allowing the paint to adhere easier also I'm just doing a real general coat right now for you, everyone. I'm not going into detail. I've got to get a chair out here to do the super detail in the tight areas. I'm just showing you a light coat all over this thing. Let me hit the barrel. Barrel, what I'll do is I'll open up on that. Not too much. Hit it gently. Because you really want to cover that aluminum, but you don't want a drip mark. You know, that's the main thing. And I'll go over that a few times. Just take my time. See, it's not as shiny anymore. And just take my time. Like I said, I've, I, the, the airbrush right now, I've just got it like on a general setting. I'm not sitting there going trying to go find detail yet. I'll trim that down. I'll trim the air pressure down a little bit and other things when I want to get real close into certain areas. You just got to take your time. And this is how you basically airbrush. Uh, I know I had some people ask me about it. How do I airbrush? What do I do? And I thought, well, since I got the option here, why don't I go ahead and show everyone? Like I said, I'm just doing a general coat right now. 
Um, just, a, just a general. I don't want to sit there and go into all the little cracks and crevices yet because I've got to zone this thing down and do all that. A lot less air pressure and stuff like that. But basically you'll get the detail part of it. Hit the front here. Try and even everything out. You get a little, pull it back a little bit, just get a little heavier spray going on this barrel. One thing is, uh, those aluminum barrels sometimes for me, it's uh, harder to coat those without dripping, so you're really careful. Like I said, everything's turning out really good. Got a lot more painting to go. Do everything in light coats. I'm real happy. I love this primer. I love Model Master Primer. It is, for me, it's the cat's meow. I really enjoy it. But you want to make sure and get it everywhere because, you know, you want your next coat of paint, which is going to be my uh, Israeli sand color, to really adhere to it well, especially on this barrel. Alright, so basically that's the first coat. Oops, hold on, let me see. And it's all primered out. That's the first coat. I'm going to come back, get in, look around with my uh, visors on, and I'm going to see all the little areas I haven't hit. And little tiny areas I just, you know, just need a little bit of dot here and there. And uh, that'll work. Um, as you can see, <laughs> I've already got paint coming out of here. I'm a sloppy painter. Uh, but anyway, there's that. Let me put this back. I'll be right back. All right, uh, in case you can see down here, um, I've got the commander's hatch right here. Let me get that up. I always blue tack to put everything down. It holds it even better. All right, here we go with the commander's hatch. I'm just going to hit this, get this ready. Okay. I'm just going to hit it lightly. I remember I put Tamiya tape right up there before. Oops, sorry. Before, so that'll protect that from being coated. But the primal will now hit everything, coat it all the way I want it to, especially the clear pieces. It's not going to be clear anymore, just where I want it to be. And uh, I'm going to worry about I should have put silver behind that now that I think about it. Oh well. I'm not going to worry about every little thing. Hold on, let me see the paint. There we go. If your paint gets stuck, pull it back and then start all over. All right, let's get a good coat on there. So I'm just doing general. Let's turn out good. So there's a nice thin coat. Put it back over here on this. There's one of the, the trucks. Got a little blue tack on there, hold it in. Got this little area here. Like I said, everything's gonna, just gonna take my time. I'm not in a rush. When you start rushing stuff is when you goof up. And you don't wanna goof up. You get too close, see how I'm pretty far away. I mean, not too far away, but getting in there. Take your time. Don't get too close. Don't spray too much. Just want to get a nice thin coat on there. And I'll be out here for about an hour or so. And uh, just doing everything. See, now you can see that's all one color. Get rid of the the brass thing on the, the top part there, got that all colored in, hit inside the wheels themselves. There you go. It's that easy. Airbrushing is so cool. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I do really, in, I do really enjoy it. Camouflage is what I really hate doing, but oh well. Um, let me hit this searchlight a little bit more, another coat. I'm trying to mainly get in the center here because the next thing I want to do, probably tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to get in there and use um, that um, all clad black, just put it black in the middle there, and then I'll use all clad chrome after that dries. And that way I can um, mask that off after that. Then I can mount this on the turret, spray it again with some primer, and put the cord on that goes from the back here to the area, and it'll be fine. All right, well, anyway. Uh, 
I'm going to continue with this for a while. Uh, I'll be back. I'm, I'll show you how I clean my airbrush. I know I had some questions about that from uh, uh, Miram Sky and a couple other people to show me how you clean your airbrush, and I'll show you. It's real easy. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I uh, am finished painting. You're finished painting. You need to clean your airbrush. What do you do? Well, let me show you. One airbrush. Pull the cap off. Oh my gosh, there's paint down in there. Chuck that paint. There we go. Just a little bit up in there. Now, what I do, here's my pipette. Put some thinner through there. Blow it out. Well, I'll, do, I'll do it this way, but just blow it out like that, okay? Ah, I don't want to hit anything there. Chuck out the excess. I, I just do it to lubricate a little bit. Then what I do, what you should do, is... What I like to do is pull this cap off. I mean, pull the paint chamber out. Put this back like this. Take a little bit of thinner, dip it on my rag, and clean this thing out. That way, I got a head start on cleaning it. All right, as you can see, it's nice and clean. Then what I'll do is I'll take this. Let me come down a little bit so you can see, so I can show you what I'm doing. What I do is I start putting a lot of this. Oops, hold on, I moved the camera. There we go. I'm just gonna make a mess here, so pay no attention. I'm gonna sit there and ooze this out. Then I'm gonna sit there and blow this out into here, into this paper towel. It doesn't really matter, it's not gonna hurt anything. There we go. Get it out. Take some more. Clean it all out like that. Get. I mean, just keep doing. That's what I do. I mean, everybody's gonna be different how you clean your airbrush. I'm really thorough. I mean, I love my airbrushes. And I take the time. Now, if I'm switching between paints, I don't worry about it. If I'm going from like a black to a brown to a blue or whatever, I don't care. I'll do that while I'm doing it and I'm painting the camouflage or whatever it is. This is after you're done. I completely clean this airbrush. All right, so now, chamber is clean pretty much. Now what I do is I start taking it apart. Now, first thing I wanna do is undo my front cap here. Okay, pull this off. Okay, now be careful, your needle is right there. See your needle? I'm gonna take this, these two parts here. I'm gonna, oh, if I can get it out. Oops, the earring fell off. Come on, there we go. There's that piece. Paint, and then you want to get this in there. So put them in there, let them soak. Now, pull the back end off. If I can pull the back end off, there we go. Now I want to get the needle out. Undo the collet right back here. Loosen it, push the needle forward. There she comes. Now she's gonna be dirty, so pull her all the way out. Do not bend the needle. There we go, there she is, beautiful needle. Now what I do is I take that pipette and I just sit here and rinse this thing out like this. Then I take now you can get these brushes, these are air brushes you get over at um, Harbor Freight. Three or four dollars for a set. You want to coat one of them in some thinner, like this, and push it in there like that. Get that, get those O-rings a little cleaner. They're real soft, they won't hurt anything. If you really want to, you can get one of the really thin ones here, like this one. Get really far in there. There you go, like that. See how I can get in there where the needle is? It's very thin, it won't hurt anything. I do that, get it in there, get it out. Now, what you can also do, sometimes what I do is I get a little, I push the air pressure, and I go like that. Get in there a little bit. Really clean the living heck out of it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna turn the air pressure up a little bit. This is up all the way. Turn the air pressure on down here. Let's go up to about 30 PSI. Let's 
All right, so I also take a large brush, one of the largest ones here, and I dip it in here, and I go in and I really clean that out. Clean that front area out. Get it all nice and washed out. Just hit the front end here. Get that area. Get the little hole. There's a little hole here that mixes down in there. I really clean the living heck out of my airbrushes. I love my airbrushes, so I really take care of them. And so, pull that back out. All right, she's pretty much clean. What I'll do, take a paper towel. Excuse me while I use my mouth. Dip it in here. Wipe off the rest of my airbrush. Don't worry about it, just get her nice and clean. You want this thing, you know, if you want a good tool, the way to do it is to keep it clean. Um, you know, really work at it. Don't sit there and I, I've seen guys, oh my God, I can tell you a few guys I've seen airbrushing that their airbrushes just look like crap. I mean, it's like amazing that they still work. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's the needle. What I do is I take it and gently pull through a, a soaked Either you use you know whatever you're using I'm using thinner uh, if you want to if you use acrylic paints you're going to be using water or windshield wiper fluid or alcohol denatured alcohol works best for that I just keep pulling it through cleaning it up same thing here just do it a couple times let's get it really clean be careful do not bend the tip pull off do not pull straight back just do not sit there and bend it okay there we go a nice clean needle now I've got these parts in here. Same thing with this. Now, I'm gonna take, you can, down in here, I can see a little paint in there. Take this, get it out of there. Now, I have a special tool for this. This comes with my um, uh, Harder, Harder and Steenbeck Infinity. It's a very fine needle. And what you do, there's still stuff, paint coming out of here. You take this, you put it in here, and you go like that, and it cleans that out for you. It's that easy. And rinse it through, just rinse it through, just make sure I do it again. I always do things twice usually, uh, just to make sure, I guess I wanna really make sure everything's done. Then what I do, I shoot this through here, just to make sure every little bit's out. Now here's the front. Same thing here, shoot it through here. This really doesn't get dirty except for the right here by the front, which I hit with that. And I can even take this piece off here, which is just pressed, fitted on, it just comes right off. Take all that. Now I'm pretty much clean with everything there. Wipe everything down. Take a dry, dry paper towel. Wipe everything off. All right. Now I've got my airbrush again, it's nice and clean, looks good. First thing I'm gonna do is um, put my needle back in. Now, be careful. You can slide it in from the rear end here, but you're gonna, you might damage it. On Harder and Steenbeck things, their needles are made so well, if you put them in backwards, it won't hurt it. So just be careful, stick it in there. You're gonna pull back. If the trigger's in your way, you just move it, but it's not. So what I do is I pull it back to there, coming out the back here, right? Pull it back till that tip pulls all the way through, well enough here. Now, I'll put these two pieces back together. I'll press fit this back on the front. Screw it on. Now the needle, you can't see the needle. It's too far in, you're not gonna hurt anything. So this goes on like that gonna be fine. Oops. Just don't want to bend that needle. All right, now this just goes by hand, like that. Straighten that front end up to where you want it. Gently push this forward till it stops. That's it. Tighten this collet down. Test it. Look at that, it works beautiful. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of, a uh, couple drops of thinner through there and do that. Look at that, she works beautiful. All right, that's it. And now I'll put the back end on, which is the micrometer part. So that way it's adjustable for your trigger. So if I push, if I screw this in, hold on, if I screw this in like this, my trigger has less and less throw, see? If I go in real far, like has no throw at all. 
See, it has minimal throw. Now look, I can if I'm doing fine lines and work, I can go like this, and it, it just keeps these sudden to go, whoa, too far back. If I goof up, it's where I want it. Now, if it gets clogged or something, say a little paint gets clogged or something, you just pop this back. You got full throw. Full, full throw. I'm sorry, I'm not showing you. Once you're done, you unclog it, push that back, and you're back to where you left off. Wonderful airbrush. Everyone should get one. Infinities are nice, but they have a whole series, Evolution, all this kind of great series. These are awesome airbrushes. You need one. <laughs> There's lots of good airbrushes out there. I just fell in love with this one. All right, uh, other than that, that's how I clean my airbrush. I'm gonna finish cleaning up the rest of this stuff, and uh, that's my tutorial, or my, uh, I'm sorry, just showing you how I uh, how I airbrush. Uh, I know I've asked questions, and how, to, how I clean my airbrush. So I've had questions asked, and I thought I'd make a little video here outside. It's a beautiful day. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.